Hey guys, it's Teeth, and I am back. Uh, last few weeks, I've been kind of down and out with the sickness. I've been battling bronchitis, and the last week and a half, I've kind of lost my voice. I'm just kind of nursing it back to health right now, so forgive me if I kind of stop in the middle of talking. But I want to show you this awesome shot I took of the Tokyo Tower from the World Trade Center building when one of my friends from Korea came and visited. I took him over here to the World Trade Center building, and we got a wonderful sunset. We took a few shots, and I want to show you the image plus and how I edit it. So we're going to take this basic exposure, and we're going to turn it into something like this. So let's get going. So I went ahead, and I shot at the World Trade Center building, and I got my three exposures in a simple HDR. We have our negative, our base, and then our positive. Every single one has a little bit of something I want to use from it, but the biggest one I want to use is obviously our base. It has a good tonal range throughout and I think we can use it and make it really awesome on itself. So that's the plan but we're going to actually take a blue hour shot and we're going to add the lights from here into the golden hour. So when we're finished we'll have an image that looks something like this. So First things first, I just updated the Lightroom to where you can do the merged HDR. So I'm no longer having to go into a third party program. I'm actually doing it here. So we're going to go ahead and select all three images. We're going to go over here and we're not going to mess with anything. We're going to go ahead and take the sharpening down on all three of them. And then obviously hit the profile corrections. This was shot with a FE 24 to 240 lens. I just picked this lens up. Shot at 38 millimeters, f8, and aperture priority mode. So it's shooting for me. So once that's done, we're going to go ahead and do photo merge HDR, and it's going to pop up this dialog box. If you've never done this before, it's quite simple. Just simply select three images that are different exposures. You can do this with two images, and it'll work just as good. So once it's done, it's going to create this basic image for you. You can auto tone and it's going to go ahead and try and edit the image for you. However, I like to leave it off and then deghosting will obviously take parts of the image that are moving and then select the best one for you. So you can do none, low, medium, and high. So at this point, we're going to leave it on high, show deghosting overlay. And if there is something deghosting, it'll actually show up in a red blotch. So, Obviously this was taken pretty good, so we're gonna go ahead and hit merge. But I've already done this, so we're just gonna hit cancel, get out of it, and we're gonna look at the final resort right here. So this is a super file, a super raw file. It has all the exposures from the three combined into one, so you can have a lot of flexibility in how you move it up and down. On this one, we're gonna play it by ear, and I've already edited it once, so we're just gonna go through real quick. On the highlights, I don't want to go too dark because it muddies it up a little bit. So we're going to just bring it up a little bit on that. On the shadows, I don't want them to be totally unrealistic. So we're going to go with something probably right around here, 55. So it's getting a nice balance where it looks good. On the white point, just bring it up a little bit. On the blacks, we might bring it down, just get a nice little point where we get it. I like it right about there and the whites obviously we got a little bit burnt out on the sun which I'm gonna leave so that's the point on the vibrance I feel like this image is a little lacking so we're just gonna pump it up a little bit and then we might add a little bit of contrast and then we might also bring up a little bit on the exposure so it looks good then I think we don't mess with anything over here in saturation. Sharpening, we're going to leave alone right there. And then obviously remove chromatic aberrations. And then here is where the fun begins. We're going to use a new tool in Guided. We're going to go ahead and select a point down here on the outside. And then come up. And then right in there. And then that's going to be the corner of the building. We're going to go down to this building. And we're going to select and we're just going to bring it up. The reason we're doing this is because this lens is shot at a somewhat wide angle and you can see once it does it, it actually tweaks it a little bit. So, hit done. 
you can see that it does move the building a little bit. Like you can see that it crops it just a little bit. But it made everything, all the towers more upright, which is what we're going for. Once that's all said and done, the next thing we need to do is we need to play with the blue image because blue and gold, as much as it's a good color combo, it needs to blend a little bit better. This blue hour shot, we're gonna have to try and blend it so it kind of works really well with this golden hour shot. So we're gonna have to bring up the temperature. We're gonna bring it up to something about 82, I think. 80, that looks better. So we're already seeing that the blue is gone out of the image. And then we're going to bring it up a little bit to give it that warmer cast. That looks good. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to mess with the highlights. So we don't want to go crazy and darken down the sky. We just want to do something so it blends a little bit easier when we get to that point. And then the next thing we do is do our whites. So it's blown out here and then we don't want any blown out parts. So go down about there. And once that's about done, we have our image that's going to blend a little bit easier with this one. Once you're done adjusting the blue hour, go ahead and select your main image, the golden shot, and look at them back and forth and make sure that they look good. It's going to blend easier together if they're really similar in color tone. You can also see here where I'm selecting back and forth is that my tripod actually moved a little bit, but the lens focal length did not change, so Lightroom should be able to take care of this really, really easily. Though. So go ahead and select both, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Guys, here we are in Photoshop. We've gone ahead and imported them in from Lightroom, and I've gone ahead and saved us a little bit of time by selecting both layers, going over to Align, Auto Align, and go ahead and align them. So as you can see from the blue to the gold, uh, the lines look really good. They have pretty good uh, matching up. We don't have to worry about that too much because Photoshop did a wonderful job. And since I shot it with just a little bit of a movement at 38 millimeters and the zoom did not change, it should line up really well. It's a mess up on my part, but we're gonna work with it here. So first things we're first is we're gonna get these lights from the blue hour. We're gonna put them in the gold scene. So easiest to do is select the top layer Make sure the blue is on top, go over here to lighten, and voila, you have your lights on the gold scene. However, we do have some issues up here in the sky, and we're going to have to fix that real quick. There's a couple of different ways to do it, and I'm going to show you the quick and easiest way that I like to do it. Go here to your blue, go over here to select color range, and we're just going to select on the sky a little bit, create a mask, and this is going to be a garbage mask. So go ahead and apply it. And we're going to refine it. So you see here that it doesn't do a real good job, but we're going to go ahead and click invert. Helps out the sky a little bit, but we're going to make it even better. So go over here to your channel. You can go ahead and see your mask. And we're going to make this even better. So first things first is go ahead and hit Command M, bring up a load of the curves, and we're just going to pop up the whites and we're going to kill the blacks. Okay. I'm just going to go all crazy. And then once we're there, hit OK. Do it again. Bring those blacks all the way up. And we're doing this just to bring out all the details in the tower. Normally you don't have to go this drastic, but we are just to make sure we have the tower nice and separated. Next thing you're going to do is I go to the shape tool and I just start selecting boxes. So go to black and create a black box, create a black box. And this is all getting made into a mask, just a simple garbage mask, but we're gonna refine it right here. So this part right here, we can go ahead and get rid of this. Now we can do the foreground also, since it's a nice horizon line, grab all the way across. And now we have this done. Since these buildings are easy to take care of, you can go ahead and do squares. And you don't have to be exact because like I said, in Lightroom, we went ahead and tried matching the colors really close so you don't have to be totally exact. It does help if you want this to be a quality, quality piece. When I did it for myself and I wanted to make sure it was perfect, I actually went nice and slow and I actually went through and brushed all these parts out. But here we go. This is your mask now. So we will fix this actually before we go. But you can see all the details here in the tower that we've separated now. 
And this is gonna be really easy. So you grab here, grab up, over, whoop, gotta switch colors. So we go over to black, go to the base, up, now that's black, go to the base, up, black, and black. We'll do the rest in there. So we'll go ahead and enable all the colors, deselect that, go over here to layers, and zoom out. And you can see that we've gone ahead and fixed everything. So now the sky is what we wanted it. The foreground has the lights, and we do have this blur of an image you can see in the mask. We have to fix this. So it's gonna be just a simple paintbrush. We'll simply just brush that out by going to the mask, hitting B for brush, going ahead and enlarging our brush, making sure it's nice and easy and simple. And we'll go ahead and start blending it out. And that's it. Maybe come over here also to the top of the tower and see how this looks. And it looks pretty good. Maybe do a simple brush on it here and there. Just tame it down a little bit. And that's it. You just created a nice simple mask and you've got the rest of the buildings in. Now the fun part is that we've got this blended. It looks really good, but we're going to take it to the next step while we're here. So go ahead and select all of them. Click, hit Command G. We'll go ahead and hit this, call this blend. And we'll go Command, Option, Shift, and E. And that will create us a master copy of everything. Go to Color Effects Pro real quick. We'll just make this real simple and show you what Color Effects Pro will also do your images. We've done this many times. We're going to do it again on this one. So here are my settings from last time, and I like them, so I'm not gonna play with them too much. Remove some of the color cast. So obviously we have a gold scene, opposite of gold is blue, so it fills it with blue. So bring back a little bit, dynamic contrast, and then we have correct contrast. So we're gonna leave that alone. Maybe add a filter, maybe go brilliance warmth, add a little bit of warmth, add a little bit of saturation, and then this will help bring out the blues. We have a little issue down here. Now we turn the buildings blue. So we only want this happening in the top in the sky. So we go ahead and create some points. Click on the sky all over. This is going to help bring out some of that color. You go over here to control points. You can actually see exactly where it's done a job, but it's not doing a really good job. So we're going to add negative it down here. So and just go through and select. And this should also create a nice little mask. So once that's done, click back over, control points up, and you can see that it's helped out that sky just a tad a little bit. <clears throat> go ahead and click OK. There's Nick, and it just pops out that contrast and add a little bit more saturation. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just define the sky a little bit to soften it up a little bit because we do have a little bit of noise up here. We're going to do it automatic, it's analyzing, and then we're just going to use it to the top. So the sky has already been done. We're just going to hit OK and it's a real simple scene. We don't have to do too much uh, noise reduction on this since it was shot at the best ISO possible. Once it's on, we don't want it on the building, so we'll go ahead and hit a mask. And we'll go ahead and go to the gradient. And we want to go from the sky, buildings up. And that's going to remove it from the buildings and only leave it on the sky. We'll have a little bit of overlap here on the top of the buildings, but I think that's okay. We're not softening up too much. Next thing I want to do is I also want to do a contrast brightness because I just want to unify it a little bit more. Maybe bring it down a little bit more. That will help unify everything together. We might also want to do a little color balance, color saturation, contrast, but I don't think we really need to do it too much here. But I think we do want to do a sharpening lower. So we're going to go to filter, either high pass, three pixels, because that's what I'm using for my A7R. Hit OK. Hit overlay and bring this all the way up to the top. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to keep it off the sky. So simple mask and then gradient tool and then opposite way. So it's off the sky and now on the buildings. Last but not least is a little bit of cropping. Pull it in, pull it in. 
This will get rid of the bottoms and the tops. Hit the enter and voila. So guys, we can keep going and edit this down to the finite details of bringing all the colors out perfectly and dodging and burning to death, but I don't think you wanna watch that. So here's the basics of how to take an HDR in Lightroom with the new photo merge and adding the blue hour lights in Photoshop. So here's the before image and here is the after with all the little things that we've done with the blue hour, bringing it back into it. So I hope you guys like this video. And if you guys want to see videos like this, I put out a video every Wednesday showing you a little Photoshop and Lightroom tricks and tips and what I use on a daily basis to make images like this. If you guys like it, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next Wednesday. Thanks and bye. Thank you.